I'm not masking anything with it, so it's like it's. I'm just kind of feeling very strange and nervous about the upcoming release because it's like it's called traumatic because it's literally about like my childhood sexual abuse and the lens of my life ever since that happened to like look around and be like oh this is how I relate to the world these are the things that I fucked up because I got I got into a dark place from that I was like drunk forever like Jesse and I actually were in a relationship and he was just watching me like self-destruct fucking kill myself for a long time which I'm sure really sucked for him and I'm glad that we're still yeah, good so. friends and, yeah wow but yeah so this is like this whole this whole fucking record is just like whoa like I can only imagine I want to know why like so I understand the, the beginning of the word the trauma why romantic? Like, what? what is that? Because when something like that happens to you, like, you in it, like you need to rationalize your world through, like, how do, how does a man feel about me? How does, how like, how do I get, like, validation for myself? Or, or conversely, there's another way to deal with it is, like, which I did both simultaneously. It was, like, how can I control what happened to me with by making it happen again in a way that I'm saying, okay, I made this happen. So this is officially the first podcast I've recorded where I knew what my name was, like what the name of the podcast oh, is. Oh, okay. Because oh, okay. it's Seventh Helix, which I think I'm sticking with. It was, what does that even mean? Vote on it in the comments. Below. <laughs> Below. Um, so today, <laughs> today, today I'm with Candy Ambulance. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. My name's Jesse. And what do you do, Jesse? I play bass. I'm Caitlin. I play guitar and sing. I'm John. I play drums. Cool. And Jesse, you're, 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 you're a sound engineer as well, right? I am, so yeah. You do a lot of the stuff no one sees. That's right. Yeah, I, <laughs> I do mostly things that no one sees. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of creepy, actually. It is. <laughs> It is. You guys all live in the same place too, right? We do now, yeah. That's kind of cool. And we did before. What is that? Yeah, think about that. You did? Yeah. Yeah. We've been living together since we started. Really? Like two weeks in. 2014. How many bands can say that they lived together? Maybe a few thousand. (laughs) I don't know. Really? (laughs) What is that like? If you live together, do you do you ever get sick of each other? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it happens sometimes. No. It's just like any other roommates. I don't think we do. I think no. we love each other and we're just like perfect and everything okay. is sunshine. And I feel like if you love each other, you definitely get sick of each other. Oh, yeah. I think totally. that's, no, that's we, like... No, we can be like at each other's throats, but like, I don't know. We're, we're really good. I mean, I, that's too extreme. We like... Us at each other's throats is like sitting down and being like, how do you feel today? Like, well, I was a little annoyed. You know, like, we're, I don't know. We're not bad. That is the most passive at each other's throats. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you guys start? Because I, I feel like my guess was around 2016. That's when I maybe started hearing about 2014. Yeah, 2014. <laughs> so I didn't know about the, what was, what happened in the early years? The early, the early days of the band, um, Jesse and I, we, we've played in a few projects since we were like like 14 15 years Mm -hmm. old yep um so jesse and i we've been playing together since we were you know 14 15 so (laughs) over 10 years and uh in 2014 the band we were in was kind of just like fizzling and kind of not really making any moves uh jesse and caitlin worked at healthy living in saratoga at the wilton mall and uh, one night, Jesse was like, hey, this girl I work with writes songs, plays guitar. Do you want to, like, go to her house with me and, like, work on some songs with her? And I was like, yeah, why not? So we actually just started off, like, acoustic bass, acoustic guitar, and me on a cajon. So it was, like, acoustic, like. Really? Um, yeah. You started <laughs> off acoustic, like, unplugged. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know how to play, really, like, at all. So it was, like, a weird like we were just kind of like we were just kind of dicking around i i think mostly it, like nobody thought it was going to be anything what kind of music were you playing before candy ambulance all sorts of stuff uh the band that we had beforehand it was more like um soft softer alternative rock 
kind okay. of stuff. Coldplay ish. Coldplay ish. Cold. That's kind of a jump. Yeah. Yeah. Because what you guys play now is very um, intensely emotional. Right. Yeah. You know, it's very. There's a lot of emotion in there. That I would think, be. I neat. think we were missing out on something. <laughs> So does but does that feel better for you guys then to be playing something like that? Yeah, yeah, it's different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's better. I like playing the more dynamic stuff. I feel like I felt kind of stale before, so I really like the the more energetic. Sort yeah, of. yeah. You guys also have a persona. Like your band is like punk rock. You know, you guys. You, I've, I mentioned this to you <laughs> that. You guys just do really punk rock things. So how how does that work? So like not all bands have that where the they have a a persona that they maintain. And also like I know you guys work hard, mm -hmm. but there's a punk rock attitude of, of like fuck it. You know, there's that so yeah. which is almost I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I would just I, it, if I tried to have that fuck it attitude, it would just be, everybody would be like, "You're adorable." <laughs> I think we're just dirt bags, honestly. Like, <laughs> no, you guys are great. You guys are. I told like, when you guys won the Eddie, that was that was great. I was there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I was no, there. We weren't expecting that. I, I I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was perfect. It was exactly how I would want you guys to receive an award. <laughs> It was, it was, That's the feedback that we've gotten. Yeah. Like, I woke up, I, I think I might have told you this, but like the next day my eyes opened and I was like, oh no. Like, that was my first <laughs> thought was like, oh my God, I got was so wasted. I was completely blacked out. And I know like the boys were like equally as just like, just silly like with our, with our speech or whatever. Were you wearing a fur coat? Yeah, I put, the, I, that was my like only coherent thought was like, I got up to go accept the award, and I was like, oh, put your fur coat on. You got to wear a fur coat. So that was like the only thing that I thought. <laughs> That's badass. Of. Yeah. That's badass. So drunk Caitlin had my back. Um, Who runs the Instagram? All of you? All yeah, three. we all three. Yeah. Just, you just kind of say, so we have no idea we who's know. doing this. It's no. kind of that, which it's is a, a fun <laughs> thing for me. Um, yeah, I really like people not necessarily knowing who's <laughs> posting what. Yeah, and like stuff that we post like, group text stuff like the, the beef thing <laughs> from yesterday or today or whatever like jesse works at nighthawks downtown and um angie and i went there the other night to get some dinner and jesse you know he's like hey i messed up a couple burgers do you guys want it I'm like yeah we'll take it so we just ate like a bunch of beef and like the next morning i'm like texting jesse while i'm on the toilet like oh man i'm squeezing all this free beef out of my <laughs> bum right now and, like, it was our like group chat yeah. like band chat and but it like, autocorrected yeah. autocorrected to beer i'm He's squeezing, like, all, this free squeezing beer. all this free beer out of my butt right now <laughs> and then he wrote it smells like a grease trap and i was like sitting downstairs and i was just like jesus christ and then and then my thought was when did we have free beer i didn't get any free beer yeah. <laughs> like yeah your instagram is always fun it's always one i check the stories of because we're yeah. not I, like we're not we're really not trying to like bs anybody about anything yeah. we just like, want to be fun we just want to have fun and be funny and I love the questions that don't mean anything. They're, no, those are all John. I thought no, it was you. Yeah, I like They're, that. <laughs> it's so it's confusing. Surprisingly hard to like make a sentence that doesn't make sense. They don't, they not only don't make sense, they make enough sense that like I find myself trying to figure out what you're yeah. talking about. Even though I know it's bullshit. Yeah. I know that it's 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 not real. There's probably a root somewhere in there. You you're like I feel like you're going for some there's a concept. It's Remember, like the first was the 2016 election, or is the Bernie the Sanders. Barney Sanders? Barney Sanders. <laughs> yeah, like, it was like there was this quote of his that was like the most messed up sentence grammatically <laughs> that you you can read it all the way through and be like ah oh, like what you just said like <laughs> I kind of uh, wait and like like that was my first introduction to that like as a humor thing is just like that sentence makes no fucking sense <laughs> and like. But it, uh, but it almost yeah, does. It almost does. So you just reread it. And like, I don't know. <laughs> making it a poll, making there two options that equally yeah, that, don't that make any sense. Yeah, that demands attention. If it's just text, I might skip by it. But if it's a poll, yeah. I might want to, I want my feedback to matter. It, it totally does it matter. It does. We, we take, we compile all of this mm -hmm. information yeah. and at our, at our quarterly we meetings. Compute we compute it. Yeah, we go over. Put some AI in there. And, yeah. Uh, That's actually how we write songs. That's actually genius yeah. if you could actually do that. <laughs> yeah, oh, we yeah, do it. We do. <laughs> yeah, you guys, um, 
You guys, uh, you put off just a very cool, cool vibe. We're cool oh, people. You're, you're, you're you. cool. From from a from from an observer, I'm usually pretty cool with like approaching somebody after a show and talking to them. And you guys, I feel cool with it, but I was a little like, man, they're cool. <laughs> nah. It's so they're funny because cool. like generally I'm embarrassed. Like most of the time I feel so awkward and I know <laughs> these guys are the same. Like we're just not, we aren't, but it's it's cool that it's coming off. Yeah. It threw me through a loop because it was after the Superior. Remember I ended up going out with you. At Footsies. At Footsies. Yeah. And I, we, we talked a little bit. I don't know if you guys were there. No, we still lived up in Queensbury, so we had a really long drive home. What is touring like? You mentioned you mentioned touring. the tour. It's like boot camp. You know, like we can only survive on a very limited budget. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of eggs and tuna. Hard boiled eggs. So we hard boil. Yeah, give them the rundown. Mm. Tell, tell them what's up, Jesse. Yeah, go ahead. So we hard boil eggs and then we eat tuna and uh, a lot of mayonnaise and. Wraps. Tortilla wraps. Peanut Very butter. Midwestern butter. diet you have. Yeah. We'll get. We'll yeah, get we like. We tour the Midwest. We yeah. we'd, st- we'd go to the Midwest a lot, but we'll get like instant coffee, and so we'll go in and like soups that you can just heat up. So we'll go into a gas station and not buy anything, and just like use their hot water to like make all of our like coffee and food. <laughs> just like use the bathroom and leave. It's really this kind of shitty. Great. It's yeah. not great. <laughs> it sounds like it's, a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. I always feel really embarrassed. And there's days where I'm too embarrassed to do it because I'm just like, oh man, we're just going in and like. It sounds like that thing that, like, from my perspective, it sounds fun, but probably after about a week, you're like, <laughs> this isn't fun anymore. Right. Without like proper meals, you do start to go kind of you crazy. Do. Like, it, it like sends you into a weird. It, it doesn't feel good. Like, yeah. When did you guys start touring? <clears throat> 2016, I think. 2016. Were you still taking your clothes off at that time? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When did that stop? When people started asking for it. <laughs> when people started yeah, that's wanting good. it. <clears throat> very punk rock of you, but very good because it's not, it's no longer like a cool thing. It's yeah. Like a, it's yeah. just when it, when it wasn't, when it's like, okay, maybe people are coming to see the show for this. Instead of the instead music. Instead of the music. And and even if they were, I don't know, even if they're coming to see, because we're all fun pieces here. Um, <laughs> so even if they were like coming to see, I don't, I don't know. That just, it's, it's just like the, the wanting it to be about that was like a little just not. Yeah. It took off faster than we thought it would. And it also has followed us around forever i don't think we're ever gonna shake yeah like that's gonna be something that people are gonna remember no but i think at some point you'll fondly remember it <laughs> yeah you'll like look yeah. back on it and be like oh, well, i'm, I'm looking forward to the like when do we get fat tour and like we, <laughs> we, we, bring, back, we bring back the nudity <laughs> yeah. because we're like older and fat and like just like our guts just kind of like hanging over do you use the word pop to describe a pregnant woman being ready to oh, give birth yeah. so like pop. Could you have a pregnant woman on stage too for that? I mean, does that I mean, work? I hope to be pregnant at there least for one tour. There That'd you go. Be sweet. I hope Are you going to be, gonna be naked for, for that? Yeah. Oh, well, underwear? if I'm pregnant and I'm on tour, like I'm definitely, definitely going to be naked. Like, there's no. Really? Why would you not be? Like, if you're <laughs> pregnant and you're like on a tour, there, like, yeah. I would be showing people. That. I would be, I would be exploiting the shit out of that unborn child. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. Kid, it'd be a great story for the kid. Be great. Like later in life. I was even. I've always thought maybe like you get like the the thing and strap them to your back and give them like the noise canceling headphones and then play it with a baby just on your back. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Fuck it. Can you imagine that kids like in, in high school when when they find <laughs> that out and they're like, he's so cool. He toured with his mom when he was in the womb. Yeah. He's so been on tour. Getting my future unborn son laid is my top priority. <laughs> like, I want him to be really cool if I can pass on anything. Wing mom? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to get that as a shirt. We... I've been writing a lot about, like, the theme of, like, oh, shit, am I going to be a mother? Like, it's a weird thing like i said like, as i get older i'm just like whoa am i like totally not gonna go that path which is like a weird thing to think about it is i've even had conversations with my friends who are like freeze your eggs and i'm like holy shit am i like to the freeze your eggs stage of my life like whoa it's a little bit untapped in terms of <clears throat> that like that's a a human thing that us three aren't gonna experience yeah you know, like we're, we're not gonna have that moment where we're like holy shit is this Am I going to do this or not? And and like my goals are this specific thing that I that I haven't 
fully explored to to the extent that I want to. So like, what? Yeah, we there's actually a song on our upcoming record that's like specifically about me going to a baby shower and feeling completely like not a part of that lifestyle and like really just disconnected from the like my best friend who I grew up with who was like one of the more like wild ones and I was like oh wow like I'm really like the last person who's like still doing this weird really juvenile shit like I I'm the, I didn't grow up <laughs> it does change people like when people start getting married and having kids it's just not the same energy anymore, you know? Like, there's certain things off the table. Totally. And, uh, okay. yeah, it's kind of odd. Yeah. It's got to be difficult as a woman. You're the first female to be on the podcast. Oh, cool. The, I'm a pioneer. I'm just realizing that. Like, mm. I think I'm going to interrogate you because <laughs> just the ratio Sorry, is boys. off. What's it like? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and I'm, I'm aware. Do you, do you write the song, most of the songs? Uh, I do most of the lyrics and like the bones, and then we get together and like put the meat on. Does it start usually with the lyrics? Yeah, I would say. I think so. Mostly, there's a few exceptions, but yeah, mostly. That makes sense because the the subject matter of your songs is intense. Yeah. And yeah. The music matches it. You know, it sounds the way it needs to for that uh, emotion. Yeah, it's interesting too to like be writing songs from a feminine perspective about the subject matter that I do write about and having like two guys be like the my like my support and that is really like an interesting like sometimes I'm like oh is this too far do you guys feel like you're like in a weird like I there's a song that I've been writing recently where like the hook is like you fucking men you make me drink and I just like I'm really I'm really into it and then I was like wow these guys like playing that song it's probably gonna be such a weird feeling but but That's they're, cool. They're cool. I've I've been watching a bunch of videos of you guys, and um, I noticed two things over time. One is Caitlin gets more and more like comfortable in the in in what you are. Like mm. you were it from the beginning. It's just like you weren't totally com. It seemed like you weren't totally comfortable with it. I was like diarrhea before every little open mic. Like <laughs> I was like rubbing like my skin raw. Like bloody i had Jeez. for like years i'm just getting over that like, i mean now when you see you on stage <laughs> you just look like a pro yeah like you're just like this is what i do fuck it yeah and fuck you if you have a problem with I it i get more but, excited than nervous now but i think as long as there's either nerves or excitement i'm still like happy doing what i'm doing like yeah if i'm like not excited to be doing something that wouldn't be cool if i'm not nervous i don't know like yeah, even in the earliest things I've found, you two just like you look like you're like, yeah, we do this. This is what we do. You look very comfortable, like yeah, very yeah. confident and comfortable with what you're what you're doing. We've been doing it a while, so yeah, <laughs> it kind of gets it comes, to that point. It comes it, it, in a cool way. I'm gonna keep using that word cool, cool. for you guys. You guys are cool. <laughs> cool I try guys. to keep it cool. You guys are cool. Cool, cool guys. Cool guys. Um, yeah. And the other thing I noticed is that as Caitlin's hair grew. Your guy's hair <laughs> did the opposite. Shrunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had really long hair, and then I cut it last summer because it yeah. was just too hot. Yeah, yours hair. especially. You two especially seem to be on this reverse, weird reverse opposite yeah. thing with your hair. I'm trying to grow it back out again, though, just because I don't know. I saw what long hair was like, and I was like, oh, I want to see what short hair is like again. Got long hair or short hair, and then I was like, I kind of miss having long hair. Don't you work outside a lot? I do. Is it hard long hair? Uh, it is. That's that's another reason why I cut it. I'm a gardener, and like, when you're crawling under bushes and shrubs and shit and trees, it just like collects stuff. <laughs> and not to mention like using a leaf blower or anything, just like dust is just settling in your fucking hair. This. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't think I could do it. Do you ever do that? I, when I was in Dublin, there's a girl in my room from Australia, and she did this thing where she lifted her hair, and they like buzzed. Yeah, I've seen girls do that too. Back, but you could do that. I could. You think it would help? I think so. This is a weird um, conversation. We want this your hair weird. back, is what we're saying. I, I want my we hair back want too. Your hair back. I just want you to buzz the back of your head. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Right let's now. Do it. You know, I don't know. I'm 27 right now. Uh, Lee, I, I guess I turned 27 not too long ago in April. But um, the older I get, I know 27 isn't, I guess, old. But. Not old at all. It's not old at all, but like <laughs> I feel like my uh, 
expressing myself through my hair days are nearing its end. <laughs> and if I start doing it now, it's going to be like, what's wrong with him? 20, I've talked about this on this podcast before. 27 is a big age for men. Yeah. I think 23 is a bigger age for women because they have a biological clock. It's just like women grow up faster than we do. We, yeah. don't, we don't like have to. We, yeah. But 27 seems to be like a big age for dudes that is like, oh, I'm an adult now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a grown up. And like, I have to behave a little bit differently. Yeah. I, I wondered actually, to get a little dark, if that's why, you know, the 27 Club? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I wonder if that's like 27 is either a really good year or a really terrible year yeah. if you can't grow up yeah. at all. You know, like. Yeah. Definitely a turning point. Yeah. For young men, especially, because for <clears throat> dudes, growing up is kind of a choice. Yeah. It's. That's, yeah, I agree with that. It's, it's not really as much a choice for women, mm. as unfair as that is. It's like, you not to say that you like can't have fun or anything like that. It's just like. For dudes like that, we don't have that whoop, that question yeah. weighing down right. on us. And I also think, I, I think it's totally different. I think women just generally mature faster than men their, our, our entire lives. And there's the, you know, weight of like how women are supposed to be and like perceived in the world anyway. So like from like 12 from puberty on it's just like oh boy i'm responsible for everything that happens around me because whatever some like whatever like scope i'm looked at in, i don't know i think i think we just have to grow up yeah. a little bit faster in that way some of it is unnecessary and unfair for sure yeah and some of it i think is unavoidable yeah like like that question that like that 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 fork in the road. Like, yeah. No way to stop that one. There's nothing we can do about it. Coincidentally, though, I shaved my head at 27 because I was like, I'm in a fucking rock band. Fuck it. Like, I'm that's Britney why, Spears. Like, I'm Britney fucking Spears. <laughs> yeah, that was like, that gave me the confidence to actually get rid of the long hair that I had always had. So it's, That's awesome. Yeah. When you were younger, did you feel like you had to grow up really fast like you just described? Oh, yeah, totally. So there's a, there's a, there's a maturity in a, a growing up in like embracing the fact that like no i'm gonna i'm gonna do this stuff Some, yeah it's, it's all fine yeah. there's nothing wrong with any of this shit that i want to do i want to do it i'm gonna do it men seem to do that without <laughs> without much poking yeah. <laughs> yeah but but you know i kind of i kind of would love to see more women doing that kind of stuff how old are you 27 you're 27 too yeah. when was your birthdays march and I'm at the end of April, April 30th. Yeah, okay. The very end of April. You're I'm actually older than both the boys. How old are you? I'm 30. I, did, I was going to let you answer it because I know it's like, it's, it's, I'm not supposed to ask the it's question. Not, it's certainly not a sensitive what? question to me. Like, <laughs> I don't think, I actually think it's kind of cool that I'm 30. I do too. 30 yeah. was my one of my best years. Yeah. When I, my 30th year was one of my absolute best years. It was very freeing for me. Yeah, especially being like, like in spaces where like people assume that we're we're all younger than we are like people think that we're yeah you yeah, all like look 25. very young you look you look really young <laughs> yeah you <laughs> definitely don't look 30 um if i shave i'm gonna look like i'm like 15 <laughs> <laughs> one time in texas actually we thought we were <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to play this like college show so we thought so we yeah. well yeah yeah um and it's in this nice suburb outside of austin and the house was super cool and the bands were really cool and we're like plugging our gear in and like i feel a kid like leapfrog over me like kids were like shoving us out of the way running through the backyard and like jumping over the fence because the cops were there and we're like <laughs> we're like what the fuck is going on and it turns out that this these were all like 15 year olds so like we were and we were like you know, I was probably 25, 26, and the boys were probably like 20, 23, 24. Yeah. And uh, so, like, we're, we're not going anywhere. We're just like, oh, hey. Like, and the, they, like, rounded up all the kids, and they were starting to, like, grab everybody's IDs. And, like, our IDs look weird, obviously, because we're in Texas, and they're, like, scrutinizing them. And I was actually dressed like a cheerleader at the time. <laughs> so that's like the worst time to be like a 26-year-old cheerleader at like a 15-year-old. Am, am like... I going to see you on Dateline? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to see you right over here. <laughs> we, were, we were so freaked out. I was like, oh boy, we're getting like... Because in, in New York, 
if you are of age and there's booze like you're responsible for everything and like fortunately the cops there were like what are you like they were like what are you doing here what is this what's going on why are you dressed like a fucking cheerleader yeah. and uh we were like oh we were banned we were about to play like we just got booked for this gig through a friend who booked you how did this happen uh, just a, like just a mutual friend of ours who was who how, how did this whole party happen like how did <laughs> i don't know damn did we know and like it was funny too because it was jesse's birthday and i was gonna be like if anybody wants to make out with jesse like it's his birthday <laughs> You really like getting guys laid. You like like that's, getting like. That's what I like to do. <laughs> this is my singular goal. That's yeah. fucking amazing. Something. There's a lot of booze too, which was really weird. Yeah, there's it's a like, lot where'd of they alcohol. get all that from? Like, there were like <laughs> ten bottles of like, vodka. Yeah, there's <laughs> bottles of vodka. I think there was a there. keg. Maybe there were. Yeah. There were. Yeah. I think there were multiple kegs, if I that's recall. Crazy. There yeah. were fifteen. 15, the rich 16. kids in they were like it was oh. yeah. super w- w- wealthy they might not have been all 15 but there were definitely uh, at least most, a couple of 15 yeah. year olds and like you know 16 17 18 damn and uh a couple 18 year olds yeah, yeah it was like, mostly many, uh, like yeah. it was we mostly the like there. the 16 and yeah and then and then like jumped to like being like <laughs> in your mid 20s <laughs> it was like we and, were like oh shit <laughs> and uh well then that's how they got the alcohol yeah, yeah right. the mid twenties, the yeah. creepy yeah. mid twenties trying in the to sleep cheerleading, with fifteen year olds in the cheerleading costume. Yeah. Oh my god. So in our old house in Queensbury, we would we would throw a party like every few months, and uh, sometimes we'd play, sometimes we wouldn't. And uh, one of the more <laughs> crazy parties, uh, like someone puked in a mixing bowl and left it in the bathroom. Someone took a shit in the front yard, and you could tell it was a person because there's toilet paper <laughs> next to it, next yeah. to the shit. And uh, so. <laughs> I had this. I had this crazy idea. Like we're at in Texas. In Texas, this was again 2016, I think. And uh, at that party, like before we go on, like there's only one bathroom in this nice ass house. There's probably more upstairs, but I'm not going up there. And there's a big line, and I don't really want to poop at a party. So, uh, I I got thinking about that person who must have pooped in our front yard, <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this weird karma thing, where I'm gonna be like the the delivery driver of the karma to and some to to someone who didn't do anything to someone who didn't you. do anything to me yeah. someone who let me into their I house i think you don't understand so, karma but <laughs> no i don't <laughs> so i went out you, into the, do you feel responsible for what pounding karma into people is that what this uh, is yeah i You're, felt yeah i felt he's like he's like a superhero yeah, yeah. okay karma like man. someone karma did something guy. wrong to me i have, oh, I have to like keep delivering this wrong yeah, you to definitely don't else. understand karma no no no. i know so <laughs> many people <laughs> that like that's their whole life yeah. like that's what they think is going like on like something bad happened to me i need to make someone else <laughs> yeah. so, so what you probably just did was kicked off this entire process of pooping in yeah. someone's yard, yeah. but then it's on the like, Well, we probably, don't know. We didn't let we him finish. We don't know that that's oh. what he did. We didn't. I'm oh, sorry. You're right. I totally cut story. you off. Well, what I did was I waited in line for a little while, and then <laughs> I finally went in the bathroom, grabbed a bunch of toilet paper, got out. I went to their side yard and put my elbows on each the recycling bin and the garbage <laughs> bin. And this is like traveling for three days in a car, cramped with all of our gear and two of our friends. What does that know, have to do with poop? Well, it's just like the diet I was eating was like gas station stuff and like, right. like, just <laughs> this is a terrible t- shit. You're time taking. zones differing, like <laughs> it's time like zones. Yeah, you know my schedule's all messed up, and I'm in between two garbage cans, <laughs> and I just like took the nastiest, <laughs> like horrible shit in someone's yard, wiped myself, and like threw them in the garbage can, and just went back to the party, and then it got busted, and we didn't play. So so wait. You had someone shit a reasonable shit in your yard. Reasonable, just a fine. regular. It could have been an animal. I don't and know. your idea of karma is <laughs> like I'm gonna destroy someone's life. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> like this kid is probably gonna take out the garbage for their parents like in three days and find this like festering log and like. <laughs> so, so this is so I, I take it back. What you've done is you've kicked off an escalating process of pooping in yeah. people's, and it's it's gonna circle like, back. Yeah, not to only. You. <laughs> Not and only... it's going to be terrible. I can't imagine how you even won up what you did. Yeah, well, it's karma. Not only is that kid grounded for like a year, <laughs> you're taking the trash out for the rest of the time until you're 18. First time it takes the take first time trash they, out. Yeah, first time they take the trash out, they like almost step in this like terrible human yeah, shit. Horrible shit. 
Their parents probably stepped in it. Someone did. Someone did. <laughs> why, why, is, why is stepping in human shit worse than stepping in dog shit? Because oh, humans man. don't need to shit on the ground. This is like psychological. You're, it's like yeah. why? It's a different poop. It's bigger too. It smells different. Depending so hu- on the animal. Human, is human shit the most disgusting shit? <laughs> Maybe elephant shit because it's probably huge. <laughs> yeah, but, it, but I mean you can't be mad at the elephant for pooping where it poops. That's true, but it's so still it must gross, be the size but... that we're talking about here. Is it the uh, size? I, th- I think there's factors. Human shit is the most annoying shit. Cows, <laughs> you know, it's the most annoying. Human shit is so annoying that we built an elaborate plumbing system to get rid <laughs> yeah, of it and never exactly. have to see it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but we're, unless unless you're John. Yeah. Well, no, I, no, that was just something. That was my mission. I had yeah. to do it. I really had to poop anyways, and I didn't want to do it at a party. First of all, and then second of all, I was like, you know what? Someone did this to us. I'm going to do it to them. I specifically eat very little to contribute less shit. That's very that's, that's my, very that's my kind human. Of you. I do the exact opposite. Ever. <laughs> I've been very humbled by a touring the nerves that I have from playing shows, and I also have celiac disease, so I am just like wherever you got to If you got to do it, it's way better to just do it. If someone knows, fuck them. Are we are we fourteen? Like, so you're the most legit gluten free. Like you, you you really yeah, are. Caitlin like, has a problem. It's like yeah. it's, it's not just <laughs> I don't feel good when I eat food. No. 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 no, no. So actually we have now. we have a great tour story about that. Um so when I first found out I had celiacs, um I self-diagnosed just because of like the symptoms that I was having and then I so I wasn't sure. I was like, "Oh, well, I bet I bet I'm fine." After after like 2 months, I noticed like cra- like a crazy difference. It was like a totally new lease on life. And, uh, but still I was like, there was a part of me that was like, it's not cause of food. And so Jesse had some pancakes. <laughs> um, and I was like, ah, oh, I can eat some pancakes. Cause again, if you don't eat like solid food for, or like, like hot meals for a little while, we were on tour. I was just like, I want some pancakes. I don't give a shit. It turns out I did. Um, so I like ate the pancakes the very next day. And then this is the way it always happens is like, wasn't one it later night. on during the same night? It might have even been the same night. It's usually like a, like a six to 12 hour span. Yeah. Um, I like started like, I don't even know like what convulsing in the car. Like, I don't know. Just like, like, it's just hyperventilating. Like the pain was absolutely like unbelievable like nothing i think i've ever felt before and i and jesse went into the store to get me like some like something to relieve my stomach because we still weren't sure what was going on and uh, i remember like very specifically like through like hyperventilating like looking at john and being like we've been through so much together but like you're about to see me shit in the street and if you could just like cover me like that'd be great like i was like fucking crying this is a parking lot in chicago like 8 p.m I mean, you're like you're like soldiers now. Yeah. Like, yeah. you've been to war together yeah. at this yeah. point. You've seen some shit. You didn't shit in the street, fortunately. No, but yeah. Jesse went close. into I forgot what the name of the convenience store uh, was. Jewel Osco. Jewel Osco. Yeah, Midwest Chicago, and uh, came out with um, what is it called? Imodium or something. Imodium. <laughs> wow. How do, you, how do you guys like set up your tours? Like, what do you tour in? A Toyota Corolla. <laughs> All a, of you? Yeah. yeah. With a roof rack on the top. Yeah. I mean, We've, how much gear do you bring with you? We bring everything, but we bring like downsized stuff. So John has like a basically like a little jazz kit that he made out of like he made the kick drum out of like a, a four tom. So it's like a it's it's like a jazz kit. Yeah. It's, it's all just, very small, packs into itself. And there's no resonator heads on it, anything, so it all stacks into itself in one case. That's amazing. So it's one case full of shells, a snare drum, a bag of hardware, um, and a throne and yeah, cymbals. That's cool. So that we all... like to think that we have. Yeah, what like... about like the guitars and the amps and? It's all there. And we... a little Toyota it's Corolla. There, yeah. We've made it fit to where it's like perfectly comfortable for three people, and that's it. Yeah. Wow. So three butts are the only things that fit. Like the top is drums. Merch and like miscellaneous. The trunk is guitars, bass amp, miscellaneous. The back seat is guitar amp, some luggage, and a cooler. Symbols. Symbols too, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing you've, I mean, that's crazy. It, like just taking down is a chore, you know? Yeah. Like setting up and taking down. Yeah. You're climbing on top of a car. Doing it out of a Toyota Corolla <laughs> yeah. with a car yeah. topper. Yeah. Awesome we gas have, mileage. We've perfected. 
modern touring for a self-funded band. We're good at it. I mean, it sounds like it. You yeah. guys do it <laughs> no, quite a bit. Totally, yeah. Um, There's no cheaper, it's Spartan. more efficient way yeah. to do it. Yeah. It, I feel like that kind of thing, it's it's almost similar to going camping. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like oh, a, my God. It's when like we a, first started, I would bring, like, even the two of us, like, we would bring, like, each, like, luggage with like a lot of clothes we bring like we have each have like a backpack or like a small bag and we'll like ask people if we can use their washer like i don't know it's just it's kind of like you just don't need a lot of shit that is so cool yeah when you consider like what you're doing like you're i guess responsible to be presentable for like three hours of a day so like (laughs) you can spend most of the day just like, <laughs> like driving just... without a shirt on with like gym shorts <laughs> on get to a place eat a hard boiled egg <laughs> so you don't spend like seven bucks on some bullshit sandwich and seven then, like, to 15 depending on where you are I'm gonna, yeah you know? i'm gonna like, brainstorm for you guys other cheap transportable foods oh, Grand. Grand. Thank Grand. You. yeah because eggs and tuna it's literally we go like it's like okay cholesterol it's like do you feel like shit egg avocado tuna egg Avocado. That's like my day on tour. Yeah. Is like it's just like okay. Do I feel faded? Like egg, boom. I'm ready to go. It's like food as yeah. fuel. Like legit. Like, they are the mo- they are nutrient packed foods insane. you're doing. So yeah. like you're you're literally just fueling the engine. It's, and yeah. that's it. There's no pleasure. Like it's no, <laughs> no like especially when you're doing that every day. It's just like. <laughs> I, I was like, thinking about that when I, I talked to some of my friends who are like that MMA fighter guy. Mm-hmm. Who's from, I'm friends with, like uh, and and eating how we eat. We eat for pleasure almost always now. Yeah. But like human beings didn't really work that way. Yeah. We, nah. we didn't eat for pleasure. We ate because we were hungry. You guys are a little more in touch with that. I would assume yeah, this sort sure. of like. Yeah. And then on my end with the celiac shit, like we sometimes we get free food a lot of places and it's like pizza. And I'm always just like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah Caitlin runs into hard luck a lot. With that shit. <laughs> there's something like that. There, there's this image in my head of like. Yeah, I'm thinking of primal man struggling with not having much food to eat. And like even they have better food than you guys have. <laughs> like you guys have you guys have your boiled eggs. Yeah. yeah. Just the, you just buy like a twenty four pack warm. boil them up. <laughs> it's usually warm I mean, it's, by the time we're it's, like it's it's genius in terms of yeah. you know, saving money, portability, packed with energy. It's Cheap very smart. As Less fuck. times you have yeah. to stop on the road, like you know, we can do five hours at a time just like Sometimes with just one driver, you know, whoever the co-pilot is, is like, yo, make me an egg wrap. That's awesome. Sriracha mayo or no? It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So touring. Okay. How about the music videos? Let's talk about them. Because oh, yeah. you guys do have some cool music videos. And Thank I've you. heard from the Chromies that they're your ideas. Yeah. Um, Caitlin usually has the baby of the idea. And we just like sometimes improvise. Sometimes she has the whole thing written out. Um, That's cool. Yeah, take it. Take the it last away. one, the the one that we just shot, I like scripted down to the second because I'm like more used to it. Like now, like working with them and like and what they will let us do. So I was like, okay, at 14 seconds, like pan to John, and then like you know, like you're like. So I had the whole entire thing just done, and <laughs> I think Zach emailed me back, and he was like, thanks for doing like. The entire screen, like, thank you so much. I was like, yeah, we got a table built for you guys. It's all good. We got all the actors. Like, don't worry, we got the I whole thing. I bet that's a lot better for them. I'm sure mm. it is. I think I think they really enjoy working with us, and I couldn't say enough nice things. I love those guys yeah. so much, and fully support everything they do. They're amazing. There's and you're doing ton. the basement parties too, which is yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had the idea like when we first, when Angie and I first moved in before these guys did, and we we're like, oh, the basement's kind of gross. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that. <laughs> and then the I three like of us, or the four of us, and um, Josh and Evan from Blue Ranger and Russell the Leaf, who also live down here in Troy, we all kind of collaborated, cleaned up the basement. We cleaned the fuck out of the basement. Yeah. Like, washed the walls. Like, we cleaned every. It was pretty it was gross. Disgusting. Yeah. That's cool. Like years and years it sucks, worth, but of, it's cool that it's yeah. nice now. They were it, like, "That's what I did in here." Decades yeah. of like cable wires that are dead, mm-hmm. just hanging all over the place. Um, so we, I mean, it's still kind of like, I don't know. We practiced in there twice so far, and it's kind of like, yeah, it smells like a basement still. <laughs> and like my throat's getting scratchy. I don't know if that's a good thing or am I high? I don't know which one. <laughs> but like, 
Yeah, it works for now. And it like, is a basement. Yeah, and like I'd like to do something like that here. I think that would take off like crazy, like down like the lower level of this yeah. barn. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what your neighbors are like, but we'll even run. in the house, you got a basement in the house. <clears throat> yeah, it's you can't stand. It. I can't stand in it. It's that. Oh, okay. oh, I thought you were saying I can't true. stand it. I can't stand it. it. No, I, I like. I <laughs> All right, here's the thing. Stand. He will start a deal here. You come through Candy Ambulance, we get fifteen percent of the. That's, of the we'll, you can we'll, have more we'll than fifteen percent. No, we'll, we'll book it if you if you want. But if you wanted help with that, we could totally do that. I think it'd be fun. I we get hit a up a lot. Got a great space for it. I want we get to... hit up a lot by other bands, and sometimes we can't necessarily like have like be booking all these shows. So, I I want to help facilitate what is happening. And Troy, I want to be helpful for it because I think it's a really good thing. It's really good that so many creatives are moving in here and the, the whole energy has just changed. It feels, it's feeling more and more like we're, it's on the, like the edge of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? There's, there's this sort of certain nights, like the night after your show felt like that. It was yeah, a little it was bit, so much fun. Yeah. It was one of those nights I was like, oh man, we're like right on the edge of something here. Yeah. We're it's, like, it's happened a bunch of times this summer. Yeah. And like superior merch and like footsies and other places in town kind of like attract all those people at once like even i met like two or three new people who were like yeah i'm a musician i'm a visual artist whatever and i'm like holy shit how have i not met you yet yeah and like i found out i have the same birthday as kiki and zach that mm -hmm. same night do you really yeah we all have the same birthday and it was like a week before it no and uh yeah just like i don't know I've gotten to know a lot of people down here and it's yeah that was right before that wasn't it yep it was like a week before i think or three days? When did we play? Yeah. The 23rd or 27th? Something like that. Whatever. I don't know. It was still... a cool show. I had a good time there. I did too. And that, like, that obviously, like, it obviously wasn't our um, live show as it normally is. Like, we just played the other day in Hudson and it was loud <laughs> and it was sweaty and it was great. It was but, so good. Um, I don't know. That acoustic show, like, it opened my mind a little bit to, like, why, why couldn't our band just do this live? You could like, sometimes. There's yeah. no like. There's no reason to be. We could uh, potentially take like more gigs, or maybe like. Yeah. Make money on in a different way. Yeah. Like there's no reason to be pigeonholed. <laughs> yeah. The, like the you had it sounded great. It Thanks. sounded it didn't see it didn't abandon anything about. Yeah. What your music is. I love it. The least. crowd was so warm. It felt like everyone was like a friend or a family that member. The crowd was and, insane. Like, it was like. I was like, wow. Why are there so many people here? Like so intently. This was in Hudson. No, this was the Superior Merch show. Oh, the Superior... Yeah, that was that was a crazy was energy really at intense. that show. Yeah. That was a great show. How did you get into gardening? Um, I worked at a nursery in Queensbury in 2013. Um, just on a whim, like I was getting a haircut by someone I went to high school with. I was helping him out. Like, I'm not going to get my haircut by some random schmuck. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have my friend do it. And I went there and he's like, oh, what, do you see? what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I wash dishes at this restaurant, but I... Like, I don't know. It was just something inside that was like, but I want to, like, learn something. I want to do, like, land. I want to, like, do something outside. And he's like, oh, I used to work at this nursery. You should work there. And I did for a year. And I met this guy working there who's, uh, like, 20-ish years older than me. Uh, became a really great friend instantly. And, like, just taught me everything I, I know about gardening now. A lot about music, even. Um, and we ended up renting a house. This is our first house, the band. We rented from my boss at the nursery. He owned the land behind the nursery in this old fucking house he grew up in. He turned out to be a fucking prick. Yeah, let's tell that, that story. You know, I don't even I don't even mind mentioning his name. His name Harry is Harry <laughs> fucking oh, wow. yeah. What's his last name? His Harry? Name, Here, put, put his the name mic is, right up to yeah. your mouth there. When his you name say. is Tracy <laughs> Owner <laughs> Owner of <laughs> very, uh, Did he touch you? He did, he did not touch me. He wanted to. He, I think he did want to. And this is not a, an attack on homosexuals at all. No, it's just an attack on being touched when you don't want to be touched. Yeah, he, he yeah, did right. say some weird shit to me sometimes. Like, I'd be, like, moving quickly to get out of his way because he's kind of like a, you know, he's like a, like, if he, if he were straight, he would be that fucking douchebag in an 80s high school movie of, like, Get out of the way, bitch. You know, he'd be like, he's that dude. He, but pro he probably was that back in high school before he, probably he was. came out. He probably you know, was. He probably was. He was, he's, and I, I, I don't feel any remorse saying any of this shit because he's, he was rotten. He was rotten. Oh, I horrible, barely, man. I barely knew him. I would forgive horrible. anything. This dude was fucked up. Like well, he. First, like working for him was one thing. Like he didn't, I mean, this was 2014, 2013. 
I forgot how much I was getting paid, but it was just kind of like, like nine, nine bucks an hour. An hour. Yeah. yeah, we remember. And yeah, it, we both know that. Yeah, and <laughs> he promised like a 50 cent raise or a 75 percent raise that never happened. It's besides the point. But like, he, he's just I don't know, kind of a dick. Like he just has this like shit attitude, and uh, I don't know. Like we started renting from him after the, my first spring and summer at the place. We moved in in October, and like. We lived there, and he lived, like, a street away. So sometimes he would, like, come over and, like, make sure, like, the furnace works or make sure the oil tank is working correctly. And, like, I don't know, he's kind of an asshole. But he ended up kicking us out because I found a job that was paying $4 more during the winter time when I was he unemployed. He gave notice. I was, like, I found this other job that, like, it was in a factory. I was working with a bunch of fucking ding dongs who were just like <laughs> press the button <laughs> like homer simpson yeah exactly i was working at a yarn factory to be exact and i literally just had to like turn on a machine babysit it and i was getting paid like 12 bucks an hour and i was like what the fuck i do this for eight hours a day i don't do any labor i don't do anything i can listen to music i can just meanwhile you were working your ass off yeah meanwhile i'm like hauling mulch in the middle of july for nine bucks an hour for some dickhead and uh i don't know despite all that <laughs> he, bad shit no he threw us the fuck yeah. out though he threw three people out on their asses because john didn't want to work with him anymore he was like because yeah. you found a better job yeah i told him like dude i'm 22 years old but that like, should have nothing to do he that, gave sh- them that like should have four no fucking bearing too. yeah on your tenants like we're yeah, separate energy rent? like that's we're paying rent yeah and it was it was not like the best house. Like parts of it were just like I feel like that's totally, totally like not legal. Yeah, disgusting. we tried. We went on this entire like we we hired a lawyer. We did this whole thing. It was insane. Jesse and I went like we were like wired with like recording devices, and he told us we couldn't record it. Yeah, but like you know even what? Who told you that? Ta- Tracy Tabor. Tracy Tabor. Yeah, that he, guy. He was like, yeah, you can. What? Yeah. He, oh well, yeah, we, yeah. We, we know we that. We understand that. Yeah. No, but he was totally like, can. he was trying to fucking manipulate us. He's like, you can't record this conversation. Like, trying, he yeah, doesn't even know us. we had him on us, and you just hear us like lying. We're just like, we're like, we don't we, have, we don't have on any phones. You can. You can record anything yeah. as long as and you're part of the conversation. And it's funny too that we exactly, came yeah. that we came to that like we we researched it. We knew we're like we've yeah. got to the one party consent law. Yeah, and he and it's exact. The law is like that specifically for this sort of situation. He's the kind of guy who knows to to tell young people to try to intimidate. You can't do that. That's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. Like he was like, you can't record this conversation. Yeah, we sent him a like a legal document from our lawyer that was like, you kicked us out. Like you you oh basically you owe us our security. And this is the thing. He didn't give us our security back. For wear Which, and tear. For wear and tear. But the thing is, is like we went through, we filmed everything when we moved in and when we moved out and it was the exact fucking same. It was yeah. cleaner. It was, it was cleaner. cleaner. And he, he basically, I still have that letter. It wasn't opened. It was like he refused to receive that letter. Yeah. And it just wasn't worth it in the end to fight it anymore. No, to I, fight it I over like nine hundred bucks or whatever the fuck. Yeah, three hundred each or something. But like, but like, it was still the principle of the thing, and the fact that like Jesse and I went in like strapped and we're like, <laughs> yeah, like, we just, <laughs> yeah, but all ready for war. He's, so, he's awful. just a garbage person. He'll probably yeah. die of a brain tumor. Someday, yeah, he's you know? he's got to loop it yeah. back. This is where karma comes in. Yeah, that yeah. guy. He's probably getting shit on his lawn a lot. Yeah, his business probably sucks now because he lost two great gardeners, and because mm-hmm. yeah, that guy imagine, I worked with quit too. I can't imagine he can keep good employees. No, he, he like just that. hired like I don't know. Besides me and that guy Kyle that I mentioned, like it's I don't know, I don't know who he'd hire after that. But it, like he doesn't trust anybody, and he's just not a good guy. But. To bring that back even a little I bit more. I might have to censor his last name when I put it up. <laughs> That's fine. But, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Call him Terry for all I care. Terry. But he's, whatever. He has his own demons. He probably had a shitty life being a gay man throughout the 60s, yeah. 70s, 80s, whatever. I'm sure he had a fair deal of terrible treatment, but still not you a... You did get your karma. You passed on shit. And you got shit passed yeah, that's on right. to you. <laughs> you... <laughs> but, that was after. <laughs> but the best part about that job, that was my favorite job in the world. And uh, that led on to like, oh, wow, I learned all these skills. I know a little bit about how to maintain gardens. Um, now I just do it for just clients. And uh, 
I've racked up like a spring, summer, and fall's worth schedule of like mostly rich, white, older people in Saratoga, Glens Falls. And I just do their gardening for them and I just charge them whatever I want per hour. And I'm just like, you know, I think you should give back to the community and start working for like low income people. (laughs) Yeah. For free. For free. Yeah. For for, for $10 an hour. Or me. During the winter. (laughs) During the winter. During the winter. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You want to take a look around my yard and give me some ideas? (laughs) Yeah. I saw the roses out there. They look really nice. Do you do those? No. Oh. He notices that's so what? funny too, because like John just seems like so aloof, and then he'll be like, "Oh, like that's like this specific plan. This is how you care for it." And like he's really, really good. It's insane. I do like Thank those you. roses. I try, I try my best to trim them and keep them coming in. This thing is, they're already dying. You see that? Like they don't last very long. No, I mean it's right about right now that they're gonna do their thing. Yeah, and they're about done. That's a perennial. Yeah, you know. I wish they were there longer because they're pretty. They are pretty. They're just thorns the rest of the year. Yep, every rose has its thorn. <laughs> Speaking of our musical influences. Mm. No, not really. No, let's not talk about really. that, though. Like, who are your musical influences? Obviously, Coldplay, you mentioned them. Drake, yeah. Kate's Rihanna. really big into, like, Pearl Jam. and like... Shut it. So this is, like, a common joke among us. And not me. I'm the butt of it. Is that, like, anytime someone asks that, especially through, like, verbal or, like, written interview like anything that's gonna stick is they just say that i'm super into pearl jam which i am fucking not <laughs> like i liked them okay at the when i was younger i don't know you're making me want to tell you that you like pearl jam i don't i know that. and that's the <laughs> right? thing i'm too See? passive about it i don't you like see? them i don't really care you do care I that's do. exactly yeah. why. <laughs> i love them they're my i can't get over it i love them yeah so they just tell anyone and everyone that that's my musical influence although however they, i would say that we do have like very different like the two of the, the the two boys and i have very different musical tastes so who is your other than pearl jam who are your <laughs> <laughs> like jane jane's addiction <laughs> um no i mean obviously so i didn't know there was other music besides like 90s country music until nirvana and so like i grew up like like totally like travis tritt alabama reba mcintyre alan jackson like all that shit like for a very long time like not really even knowing other music and then i wouldn't have thought that yeah well then I got my hands on a Nevermind CD like randomly and was just grunge all the way. And I think now where I'm at is like, like Neil Young is probably like one of my biggest influences, which I feel like is a great marriage of like grunge and country. It like really that's is. like that, oh, yeah. like he that's really where is. that is. And I think that those two things have aligned pretty well for me. But I also love like, I love current pop. I love like, I really do. I actually do love like Drake, Rihanna, cool. uh, Cardi B is like an obsession. Billie Eilish, I'm like recently very, Billie, very obsessed with. Billie Eilish, I think everyone's becoming she's very so obsessed with. She's good. phenomenal. Yeah. Really. She's so fucking good. Who does? Who who like produces? Her I think music her brother. Her brother. And they, it's like a bedroom thing. Like they just fucking do it. Sounds it sounds amazing. I feel like it's it's moved on past that probably yeah to, probably at to, this, point. to this point because the sound quality really is. That's what I like. Out she's, of this world. Yeah. She's out of this world, but it's yeah. produced extremely well. Oh, yeah. It's like I do. I believe it's, it's her brother. Like I I checked her like Wikipedia out pretty recently, and I think that it it's like her her and her brother are doing that. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, they're fucking amazing. We um, listen to them on tour a lot. I would say, like, Kings of Leon, the Beatles, um, Bee Gees, the Bee Gees, oh, great. Uh, and the Doug soundtrack. Oh, yeah, we listen to the Doug soundtrack, the Beats. <laughs> There's like a five track album on Spotify of just the Beats, and uh, we'll just throw it on for, like after a show. A trash can. <laughs> like, think big, think big. <laughs> Think big, think, think big. big. Think big. Um, that sounds like you. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. It's a, it like gets in your mind, and yeah. so like for that, just maybe I can remember every moment on I the tour. I already have that we a that. trash can stuck in my head right now. <laughs> oh, it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll be like, we'll be like packing up our shit, and then somebody will be like, think big. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. about you guys? Um. I'm trying to think of like what I listened to recently. I listen to so many more podcasts and music now. It's but um, the last thing I remember being really obsessed with was um, probably uh, when Connor Oberst and Phoebe Bridgers made Better Oblivion Community Center. 
that was like during the winter time. And uh, I listened to that album probably like 50 plus times. I feel like an idiot because I didn't know about that. Oh, well, it's and it's great. I think it's I like, really need to listen to that. And I had never listened to Phoebe Bridgers before. And now like I can tell which song she wrote when I listened to the Better Oblivion Community Center CD. It's like, oh, okay. Like I recognize like that melody, that thing she does with her voice. Like that sounds like that other song. And it has like the great, obviously, songwriting of Connor Oberst and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Connor Oberst. You are or not? I am. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I like him a lot. He's, I've seen him live a few times. And he's, a, he's an interesting guy. Yeah, he's drunk. Or at least yeah. he used to be. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time I heard... Um, well, I can never remember the name of the song. I can only, only remember what the song's about. It's like a... Starts with him talking, telling a story of a girl on an airplane. Oh, yeah. it's uh, I don't know. I can't. That was it. my introduction to him. Yeah, was that song, and when I heard that, like it just, I love that song. Yeah, it's a great song. And then I started listening to all of his other stuff. Holy shit! That's yeah, just I can shamelessly service. say he's one of my favorites. Okay, cool. I um, I think Connor Oberst is the biggest poser <laughs> in <laughs> musical history. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Yeah. I, I love that album so much, the one that you're talking about. But everything after that, I feel like, is just him ripping off some other great musician. <laughs> yeah. His, his, I will say that his later stuff, besides Ruminations and Salutations, I love those two albums. But um, the one that came out in like 2014, the Neil Young one? Yeah. The Upside Down Mountain one. That one is just like kind of, and that one didn't do very well. <laughs> Which kind of sent him into a spiral because he was also yeah. wrapped up in a rape case. Oh no! That, oh no! That the, oh. That the woman intense. actually said like, "Oh, I made it up. Sorry," and he sued the fuck, fuck out of their family. Um, Jesus. That I mean, that album at the time, you know, I was what, like twenty one, twenty two years old, and I was like, "This is this has changed my life, man." I was just eating mushrooms and like going to the beach <laughs> listening to that, and I was like, "This is the real thing." And now looking back at, it, I was like. All these songs kind of suck. <laughs> this is definitely his low point. But the past two albums or three albums he's made, I'm just kind of like, damn, nice, still doing it. He's come back. Have you listened to the last two albums? No. W- cool. Will you give him a chance? Sure. You give him a chance? Sure. I feel like if you tell me that they're good, <laughs> then I can really. Then they are it. good. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Who are you influenced? Uh, I feel like we covered most of that. I'm really into uh, Bee Gees. Um, oh, okay. I really like. Um, Billy Eilish right now. Um, Tim Heidecker is doing some actually pretty cool stuff. Yeah. His, music his music is, is awesome. fucking he awesome. Music? He, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. His records are you. You should absolutely like as soon as we're done tonight. Like start listening okay. to that. He's. It's like it's not satire. It is satire. It's fucking musically just like intricate, gifted, really cool shit going on. I. It's. It's like kind of silly, but it's, in like a clever way. Yeah, it's so good. To see this many people making music yeah. in this area and really well. And yeah. Like, there's a ton of it that's like really fucking good around here. Yeah. There seems to be some epicenters. There's like, you guys are from like Queensbury, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Hasty Page is also from there. I like yeah. those yeah. guys. They just played a Times yeah. Union yeah. Center. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And we went to high they school with podcast. Delaney. Oh, really? Yeah. They're cool. Yeah, they're cool guys. Yeah, they were like they're one like, of the earlier ones. Right? Yeah. yeah. Super young, super cool, super fucking talented young mm-hmm. young yeah. guys. I know. They are so but, fucking nice. Yeah, I've been a few of those I've, guys. I've only met them at like one show and they're so fucking nice. They're sweethearts. Yeah. They're like really super kind. And that's how you fucking do it. Like that's like a big deal for us is just like be nice Every, and we don't we don't have to like try to be nice but it's just like really fucking important for us to like forge relationships be nice to people and like i can't tell you how many shows we go and play where it's like the band that booked us like doesn't even watch the show like it's like it's just like dude you just just be fucking nice it's the only yeah. way to keep going be nice and then also work your ass off and pay a bunch of people to support your shit like it's <laughs> you know it's it, it's like not i really want you guys to have a t-shirt that's the yellow of your your like we used to have one. Oh yeah we, we we had, had a long sleeve sleeves shirt and they sold out fucking immediately we should probably get them again awesome. not right that's now a great <laughs> the color fits you guys yeah oh, actually i wanted to i wanted to scold you because it's not the picture on your spotify 
Oh, oh right. right. I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to scold you. That is a pretty old picture. <laughs> well, that it, is an old I picture. Just, I, no, but the yellow is just very, it's striking, and I, I see that yellow, and I know it's you guys. It's a, oh, cool. Yeah. Glad to know that. Yeah. yeah. It's a good color. I think it fits you guys. Jesse made that. Cool. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's He's a, also it, like good at graphic design. He, yeah. does, yeah. he does a lot of our yeah. website stuff. Yeah, Jesse's like the computer guy. I'm trying to get into I'm the, graphic uh, design. Yeah, I'm the guy who does stuff that no one sees. He, <laughs> here we go. He's here the here. one yeah, doing yeah. stuff that yeah. nobody <laughs> sees. I, I think the Candy Ambulance brand is pretty strong. The name is cool. I will not ask you about the name. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not, not going to do that to you. But it is cool. It's got... It's a cool sound, you know. It's yeah. It's got a cool feel. Andy to it. ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? That whole thing like the super dark uh, oh, festival great. thing. It was definitely like when that when it first started at One Caroline when that place was still open. That completely like turned. You know, when you think Saratoga, it's like, oh great, old dudes covering fucking the weight at Gaffney's. <laughs> Like, like your worst nightmare. Like, oh man, this guy's getting paid six hundred bucks to play these fucking songs <laughs> that were written thirty years ago, or yeah. forty years ago. And uh, Super Dark like invited bands out of state, even out of country. They've had people from the UK, Japan, Japan, Canada, Australia, I think too. Like bands from all the fuck over mixed in with locals twice a week. Cannot like, make six hundred dollars though. No, you're not gonna make six hundred dollars. <laughs> Cannot make that. You're gonna no. see a free show <laughs> at one of your favorite bars in town and also play you know, it. And also play it. Yeah. Like it's that's it, cool it's, though. You know, no, it's totally cool. We do one every once in a while just because it's like it's a fun show, but we're not expecting like we're not gonna make more than fifty bucks on this, which sucks to say that we're at that point in our like if you wanna call it career, which is what we're seeing it as now is like we're starting to get paid now. We're starting to like pay our rent with mo- money we're making off touring and shows, which is like, if you tell that to like the nine year old me who asked for a <laughs> drum set for Christmas, like that I'm gonna be making, I'm gonna be paying a bill with playing my drums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, made it. I'm done. I'm done. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I say the same That's... shit about. So we recorded with Tommy Stinson of the Replacements. Okay. And like. He was our producer for the record that we're putting out now. And it's like, if you told 15-year-old me that that happened, I died. I'm dead. I'm, I don't care. Like, nothing else could happen. Nothing else could happen to me, better or worse. I've achieved everything. So you guys are putting out another record? Yeah, yeah. When, It'll September. When? Ooh, even the boys don't know this, but I was talking with our PR company today. Ooh. But the release date is September 13th. It's a Friday, September the 13th. 13th. So what stage are you in? Are they, they mixing? We're in the mixing. <laughs> You're right in the now. mixing? Yep. Yeah, Jesse's, okay, cool. Jesse's the, uh, I'm the mixer. You're doing the mixing? I'm mixing it. That's cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. I find that whole thing fascinating, talking to people about the process. Because nobody knows. It's a neat process. Like So much goes into it that people don't really know about, you know? But they rely on it. But they rely on it. Like no one, no one listens to an album. People, I mean, I'm I'm thinking people who don't know music first off, like people who aren't in bands. People, no, no one listens to an album and thinks, man, this is a great fucking mix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like no one's like, wow, the yeah. guy who fucking recorded this did a really good job, or the girl who recorded this did a really good job. You know, it's like it's all about the band. Yeah. You know, the engineers are the unsung heroes, and it's it's just such a cool thing to be a part of. Hanging out with the Dark Honey guys has given me a completely new appreciation for that. Yeah. And talking to people like Brian uh, Shortell, mm. like, and I imagine if I talk to you, probably the same thing. Like, you do take completely for granted everything, everything about it. Right. You, you, you think, like... The average person thinks, oh, you just go into the studio and you record it, right? Yeah. You just like, you, 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 you just play put a, a mic show. up. Yeah. You just put a mic up and then you're good to go. Right. Yeah. Why not just do it at a show? It's all, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You'll get it all sent exactly. to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And you put, that's what yeah. you put out. No, but it, it, it is, it is fascinating and, and it's, no one would like what they think it is. You know, <laughs> yeah. no one would like it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's it's but I it's can't worth it. To imagine me. it's it must be painstaking. Oh and like, yeah, yeah. Especially working on your own project, because um, it it makes things it makes things a little more complicated, especially um, the dynamic between each member. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah, because if you're doing the mixing for the band, you operate as a band member and the 
Makes exactly. sense. So you have. Yeah. In, how do you balance that? It's a good question. We don't. We don't. <laughs> we fight a lot. Because <laughs> you, you get input as a band, as a right. band member, but you mm-hmm. almost would need to separate that from exactly being the mixer. Yeah. What I've been trying to do is, um, I try to basically act as though I am not in the band, and mm-hmm. I'm just a, an outside party mixing for these two, and I let them tell me what they want more or less of or what direction to take it in okay yeah and then you you provide feedback not as a band member but as the mixer i kind of do my thing as the mixer and then i let them provide the feedback and i let them take it where Got where, it. where they want to take it that's probably wise uh i i like to think so that's probably very wise yeah. that's tough it is tough. I'm definitely not going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, I think it's too much. Definitely not going to do it again. Yeah. I, it's too yeah. much. Who's going to master it? Uh, we don't have someone totally set yet, but we might work with um, Atomic Disc. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Mastering is a whole other thing that I don't it understand. Is. Like, oh, it's, it, it's, it's a totally different art and science. It's crazy. I read the Ari Herstan book and uh, it gave me a, an appreciation for the whole process of making an album and like right. i love that book have you heard about it it's, it's like haven't. making it you guys should you guys should read it it's a uh, making it in the new music industry and mm-hmm. a lot of what you guys just described about like make I, i'm paid to do this like that's the goal it's the the book kind of starts off with him saying people don't think properly he, i'm totally ruining the way he says it but people don't think properly about what it means to make it as a musician mm-hmm. because they think of it as being on the Super Bowl halftime, you know, right. and it's yeah. like, that's ridiculous. That's right. you would never hold any other Mm-mm. method of doing something to, to support yourself to that sort of right. Like, no, no, no. The goal is, can I do what I love and live my life? Right. Yeah. That's, right. And that's a great goal. Yeah. I, I think that, that, that mentality in young people today is taking over to the, I think that's why we're seeing so many great bands come out of the woodwork. It's like a bunch of people leaving this old way of looking at Mm. everything. Mm. And like, yeah, I think our goals have always been very clear is like, we'll be like, what's our five year plan? Like, yeah. Okay. We'd like to maybe tour. And then we were like, okay, we toured. Like, what do we do next? Like, Mm -hmm. so it's like, it's not like we're like, Oh, we need to do this thing, but the, the opportunities keep coming. And you guys had an album come out in 2018. Mm-hmm. So, are you like shooting for an album a year? It's full length. More or less. What's well, our yeah. first full length? So this, um, the other things were kind of things like EPs. They were EPs, yeah, like but they were also songs. songs that I had had like started. Okay. For a while, and I think this one is. This one's all like cohesively like written when we're all a band. Like it wasn't something yeah. that maybe I wrote before and we kind of pulled right. in and like. Yeah, so this one's is a all... lot of new songs. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of my my return to contributing to writing too. Um, Spray was basically just all you, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool to to start to hear my stuff again. I don't write any of the words, but I write. I wrote a good chunk of the music. For That's this cool. One, yeah. That's awesome. And so this new music video that you just made must be mm-hmm. for a new song. It is. Yep. It's the title track. It's the title track. It's called Traumantic. That's Traumantic. the record. Traumantic. It's about trauma and romance. That's perfect. And that word, mm-hmm. trauma, is really becoming a very popular word. Mm-hmm. And it describes something. Well, it's very... going back to like a very woman's time and i really i really hate to do this to these guys do i it. hate to like put, you know like put them in this like position of being like seen as like a a female band or like a female fronted or we're a female band, band. yeah <laughs> well no i mean i mean the, if you think about it essentially the songwriting is from a woman's perspective and very much about i mean this whole record is about sexual abuse an, an abusive relationship my relationship to myself in terms of how like I've been treated by men and like my family for my whole life. Like it's it's in like I wrote it because I was in therapy. So mm-hmm. like that shit is obviously going to come off as like very like a very feminine and intensely feminine perspective. 
So like it's it's kind of a weird balance for me to know that like two thirds of my band are not women and don't share the same experience and don't have the same. Maybe they don't share it exactly, but I bet there's an analog, and it might help. It might help to have them to. So I don't. I won't have that experience either as a listener, right? But if you have, if you have a couple guys who true. are like, I understand what this song is from from the point that I'm able to understand it, and I'm going to contribute this to it because I. You know, exactly, it yeah. might it might yeah, help. Yeah, it exactly. might help. You know. Yeah, I mean, translate. I just always feel I just always feel weird, like kind of like pulling them into, because like a lot of people are gonna focus on the lyrics and hear that as like what the song is. So it's like I feel like I maybe pull them into a specific. I feel that, but like lens. I think it's fine. It's I mean, what if, like a movie about World War Two about soldiers, there weren't re- really any women. Yeah. But hmm. you know, you might want women on the on the payroll. On the crew. You know, like yeah, you, yeah. Know, like, you might <laughs> you might it might help to have yeah. to have that that sort of perspective. I think it's I think it's good. I think it it helps with encouraging empathy without without uh, disrespecting the experience. Right. I like how you said the um, empathy thing because like there are lines in the songs we're about to put out that like. I I can pretty confidently say like if you're you know a heterosexual man in a relationship like some of the lines in the songs you can identify with like immediately there's one of the songs that we play it's almost our opener every show right now the first line in the song is <laughs> you know he said not to lie if you don't come you know c u m come <laughs> come you know and that's just like I don't know. can't hide uh, that. You like, can't. You can't hide from no that. Way that. There's like no that, way that. Like that. That's like a part of masculinity. That's just like I'm only gonna feel like a man if I know I did this thing for you. You know, it's fucked up, and it's it's not right or wrong. It's just how it's written, and it's like like no longer or, or it doesn't matter what gender you identify with or which gender you were born with and you still identify with. Like if you are listening to that song and you hear that, it's just like damn, like. Like at least for me, like when I when I play to that song and I hear that line and like that's like what I base the tempo off of, like right before we play it, I'm like mm hmm hmm hmm. I'm like humming <laughs> humming that line out, and I'm just like I'm getting a like, little preview of the song here. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I mean that it just hits me at a place that's just like you know I can think of like my younger self, like trying to have sex and like think of myself as like okay this is your shot Mm -hmm. like don't fuck this up don't come before your partner make sure she comes like do anything to make sure that she doesn't go home and tell her friends like i fucked john and it sucked yeah you know (laughs) rather than just enjoying this moment with somebody and it's like and there is that hell of like are you lying yeah are you lying to me like (laughs) hey if you don't come let me know i i can i can do this for you I, i you know i it's like yeah, which which is the worst thing to do, by the way. Yeah, like yeah. like that that response, not gonna make a girl <laughs> no. reach anything. Yeah. You know? no. <laughs> but I can't believe I'm gonna go here because I've I'm sure you've brought it up a million times. You know, there there is the whole Sigourney Weaver thing. Oh. But yeah. like but I was gonna I was gonna mention Alien has a similar thing. It has a female protagonist. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the like what? The uh <laughs> subtext of that movie is very feminine yeah you know like they called one of the rooms the womb room Mm -hmm. it's very much like a kind of fear of pregnancy type thing of like an unwanted pregnancy almost like that's like the alien inside and uh and yet you know dudes love that movie yeah dudes i i'd never drawn that parallel before either but that's very interesting it's well i think it's similar it's a it's a that movie would never work without a female protagonist. Right. It had to be a female protagonist. Just like it seems like this this album has to have a female yeah, yeah. lead singer and writer of these tough yeah, topics. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird place for me to be in cuz I feel like I'm like like shit I couldn't even say I'm now like expressing through is that scary? Music. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying, <laughs> especially thinking about it dropping. Especially like I've really, I've really kind of, I'm in a position of like having cut off my family. Like I don't 
associate with them anymore really um Mm -hmm. so and they may even fucking listen to this and they might not know why but like i hope they'll take a moment to listen to the record like it's just kind of this whole like moment in my life where i'm like oh okay this is yeah this is what i need to do i think it's brave uh and courageous but also like there's there the reason i use those words is because i think what people don't often connect is uh you can't be brave without vulnerability and that's what you're doing mm. is you are allowing yourself to be vulnerable and super vulnerable. Yeah. but a lot of the greatest art comes from a place yeah. of i i would argue all of it comes from a place of vulnerability it's the only way we really know how to connect mm. to another person you know like you and i can be out somewhere having a great time and and we'll connect in some way but if if you or I tell you something awful of my life, mm-hmm. we might connect in a way that is is very real. Yeah, I'm being super candid with a lot of stuff too, and it's not like you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with these like with the shit. Guys, <laughs> switch they switch shirts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got us. Boys are back and they switch shirts. But yeah, like I'm not not I'm not masking anything with it. So it's like it's I'm just kind of feeling very strange and nervous about the upcoming release because it's like it's called traumatic because it's literally about like my childhood sexual abuse and the lens of my life ever since that happened to like look around and be like oh this is how i relate to the world the, these are the things that i fucked up because i got i got into a dark place from that i was like drunk forever like jesse and i actually were in a relationship and he was just watching me like self-destruct fucking kill myself for a long time which i'm sure really sucked for him and i'm glad that we're still yeah good so. friends and <laughs> yeah wow but so, yeah so this is like this this whole fucking record is just like whoa like i can only imagine i want to know why like so i understand that the beginning of the word the trauma why romantic like what what is that because when something like that happens to you like you in it like you need to rationalize your world through like how do, how does a man feel about me how does how like how do i get like validation for myself or or conversely there's another way to deal with it is like which i did both simultaneously it was like how can i control what happened to me with by making it happen again in a way that I'm saying, okay, I made this happen so I can be like the one in power. So that's, so that's the this romantic. Is, I get it. Yeah. I do get that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. There's the, also the, oh, um, if you've ever, I'm sure you have had that moment where you realize I am more comfortable with what I can't stand. Mm-hmm. about oh, for everything sure. For sure. and i keep doing it because it's what i know and i don't know what it means to be treated like a good yeah like a good all person. the time so, still i'm like i don't know I don't, i'm not really sure what that like i think uh we have a line in one of the upcoming songs that start me off boys that <laughs> No, play it. Play it, boy. <laughs> no no the the lyric is something like and i think it's to me it's like one that really sticks out to me as like okay this is what this record means is like something about like being like preyed upon in a situation and then like maybe that was why i fell for the guy who hit me in the eye but it felt like pure love like and that's a very true like that's very fucking true and it's very honest like I genuinely mean that. Like, it's like the, these situations happened to me. So, like, getting into an abusive relationship was something that made sense because it was like, oh, yeah, this is familiar. This makes sense to me. Like, I should be here. This is what I want to have happen. So, I made that. I created that. And this is like a few years before Candy Ambulance. So, so I had like come off that and like got into this, which is good. That was a good thing. And, then, and it's been my like therapeutic way of dealing with that since. I am going to share on my end too to make it like more <laughs> even. But I think my my I, the only uh, the only thing I can connect to that is um, 
I got so used to being with a person who was who had that like so like being good to someone who couldn't handle it like just can't can't handle it and like runs away back to something terrible Jesse may be like, weighing like, in on this. Because we're, we're, we we're, ex, we're ex-fiancés, actually. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're exes. And, then, and you still, everything's cool. Yeah, everything's cool. It's great, yeah. And you guys live together. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's great. Good for you guys. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, you must know that feeling then. Yeah. That's sort of like, I mean, I don't think it was ever conscious, but it's like this time. This time I'll know how to fix them. You yeah. know, this time I'll know what to do to make it better. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 it's nothing I can do. Probably yeah. the healthiest thing you could have done for both of you was to just put her out of her misery. <laughs> 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 wow, we're getting really vulnerable here tonight. This mm-hmm. is, um, I, I feel like the most, um, um, the most interesting thing for me was seeing the pattern in myself. For that kind of thing you know like seeing like like why is it that i fall for people who have had um traumas why is it that I, that those are the people that i choose to um sort of be most um vulnerable with and i don't know why i I'm, haven't figured I'm, it out I'm, either. I'm still trying to figure that out I don't know that we'll ever figure it out fully, but I do know I'm happy that I know it now so that I can, I can be like, oh, yeah, no, we're not going to do this again. This is not, this isn't good at all. Right. I, uh, can, I, can I be a little rough? Go for it. Go, yeah. Yeah. There's a, Bring it on. I, I wonder sometimes if there's a little self-loathing in there. Yeah, I, I wonder like, that myself. I don't, I don't deserve to be with someone who is, you know, in a situation where they might benefit me as a, right. as I benefit them. Mm. Right. You know, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough one to come to terms with. Right. I wonder that sometimes yeah. if, if I just don't feel like I deserve it. I also wonder if for me, um, I just think it's interesting because I grew up with such a nice family <laughs> life. Me too. Right. Yeah. 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 And mine was like seeing his family, like his family is like, to me, like, they are my family they're and they're still like what we went to mother's day father's day like yep. like they're my family they give a shit about me in a way i've never been cared for and so do these two motherfuckers like like having people like love me in a way that actually makes sense is in in a respectful way like is change it's like completely changed it's the whole reason i've been on this entire journey that i've been on is like the support that i've gotten from these guys but yeah it's a yeah your your family is fucking incredible so like it's so yeah a lot of our like i have this kind of like drippy newer song where i'm just like why were you with me i fucked everything up like kind of thing and it's cool to i guess be in the same band and be playing that song and being like this is about you like (laughs) there's there's also the the uh if somebody else needs attention all the time, you don't have to look at yourself. Mm. You know, I don't know if you felt that one, but like, if if someone else needs attention all the time, if they have problems that are beyond anything you know, you don't ever have to look at yourself. Like you don't, you don't ever. In what like, way? Sorry, I'm. Just... Meaning, like, well, this. If I'm this, bigger than you, like, if I'm like. This requires attention. It's the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to focus on her mm-hmm. and right. not myself. Right, right, right. And it's totally. I think sometimes I wonder for me if it's like a self defense mechanism to because I don't want to look in the mirror and I sure. don't want to. I, I don't want to. Yeah, no, I I think that could be accurate for myself too. Yeah, it's all this shit. We're all yeah. fucked up. <laughs> We're all really fucked up. Yep. No matter how no matter how good your upbringing was, like you yeah. still get all fucked up. Yeah, it's it's crazy that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is weird though. There is, I know. Did, I, what? Um, did you ever feel <laughs> sorry? What? <laughs> what? Did you ever feel as? Ah, did you ever feel a sense of like survivor's guilt? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's an, that's one thing that I hate having happen when I'm around people is like when they feel bad about my situation. It's like, I, I that frustrates me. Like, I don't think I felt bad. I felt 
Uh, you feel no. They responsible. feel they feel less than. They feel like their situation is less than. Like because you, if you grew up in like a nice place. Oh yeah, I definitely. Have and that. to have and to like meet somebody like me and be like, oh shit, like that's totally different from what I've been through. And then to have that like survivor's guilt of like, well, why do I hate myself if I had a good upbringing and she had, you know, like it's, it's it's a very weird thing. And with sexual abuse survivors too, like there's. There's a whole thing where it's like when we share stories, we'll be like, oh, was it worse because it was like a family member or was it worse because it was a stranger or was it worse because it was like your teacher or was it worse because like you, there, you just do this like game of like whose was there harder. Is no worse. And it, I know. And that's the thing. Like that's, that there's no worse. And that's, yeah. that's the fucking most uncomfortable, strange thing about it for me. Mine was less like survivor's guilt and more like like the whole Superman thing. Like you've been given a gift. You need to use it to be helpful. Like it's, it's don't, don't, do not take advantage or take for granted the fact that like everything's good for you. You know, help somebody, use right. it to do something good. Right. And, but like that's a trap. Oh, like, yeah. That's a, that's a right. trap. It's not helpful either because no. you, I think sometimes you can end up being very selfish. I'm speaking to yeah. myself. I'm not trying to throw it at no, you. No, it's it it it's like a mirror. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. It can be. Yeah. It, I care about your feelings because it makes me feel bad, or like it makes me feel this. You know, it's not really. If I really cared about you, and I want, I'd want you to be able to pull yourself out of this. You know. Right. Not that I shouldn't help, but at all. But like, I'm not doing anything to really. I'm I'm enabling. You know, there's there's an enabling behavior mm-hmm. there that's sort of like I'm preventing you from hitting rock bottom when maybe that's what you need. You know, maybe you need something terrible to happen to right. you so that you can realize yeah. that what, all that you're doing is not helpful for you. And I'm stealing your pain, you know, right. Stealing your pain is like one of the worst things you can do for a person. It's just awful. It's I'm learning all this stuff now. This is a right now. This is, this is actually no. a therapy session. <laughs> that's actually what I, I think that podcasts are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They totally I, are. I really think that the whole reason for the whole thing is just people want to do this, but they don't have a microphone. They don't feel like it's important without something to... Yeah, this this actually does. I, it's weird. Now I feel more normal, but initially I was like, oh, we're supposed to like perform in some way, and now I'm just like, bah. like. Yeah, that's, a, that's, like that's, what I'm, that's what I hope for. That's awesome. All right, uh, when I, are you guys playing locally again? All right. August 30th. So, yeah, we're playing August 30th at Albany Distillery. Distillery. Distilling company. That's where Kiki Distilling works, company. right? I Is think it? so. Yeah. She's great. I want to have her come on. It's, a, co- her. it's a collaborative yeah. show mm-hmm. with the collaborative of Troy. Amazing. Also, you can see me singing at the Hamilton's event at Proctor's Theater this Thursday. Yeah, the girl, hey. the only girl they could think the to ask only- at the Eddie's. Is Caitlin. Caitlin the drunk ass <laughs> motherfucker? They asked me to do a fucking Hamilton event, like sing. Really? Who, who like you saw me at the Eddies? Why would you ask me to fucking come and sing a Broadway song? Be- no, it actually makes perfect sense. But I will. It's perfect sense. Caitlin. They're, they're like this but will not. Will. This will be interesting. <laughs> I think I'm going to get Harajuku dancers and wear like a slutty Alexander <laughs> Hamilton costume and get yeah. drunk is my plan. <laughs> you should do the cheerleader thing again and bring 15, oh, your God. own 15 year olds with you this yes, time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> bring your own 15 year old. <laughs> it's like a party. Bring your own 15 year old. Yeah. Yeah. BYO 15. Mm-hmm. I do, I do want to say I'm glad we talked a little bit about the the influence as a woman because you are the first woman to come on and I would, mm. and I think it's important to get a female perspective. I'll come on, on again. I'll tell you all mm. about the female perspective if you ever want to do that. I me and John's girlfriend Angie can can illuminate every question you've ever had. It's it's interesting because like it's really nice to have a female perspective on basically everything. Mm-hmm. You because need it. you do, you do it, even like Having like if I go on a date with somebody, mm-hmm. or if I'm ready to introduce a girl to a group of friends, it's really nice to have female input because I can't see. It's the same thing as like I, f- I bet you anything. If if you start dating a guy and you don't see anything wrong with him, we would see it fast because mm-hmm. guys yeah. just we just know we like you see like he's a liar. 
he's a sniveling little piece of shit mm-hmm. and everything you think he is he's not it's like it's like we can smell it or something yeah, yeah. and i think it's similar for women that yeah. you can like she's no good right she's, she's so when i bring home like eight guys a night you guys are like <laughs> <laughs> they're all great they're all, they're all great. great all eight of them are great all eight they're of them are perfect. great what are we gonna do what the fuck are we gonna do you picked out eight great ones tonight <laughs> yeah, um, just go down the line and just, I'm gonna pick it after this. i think for guys it's like we like to be like i know who this is he knows who he is mm-hmm. it, it's comforting yeah. if if a guy knows who he is even if i don't really like him i can tolerate a guy a lot better if it's like oh he's he's being who he is mm-hmm. this is yeah. this is him but when a guy is pretending to be something mm-hmm. to sleep with you it just if I'm friends with you, it just it. it gets on me, and it's same. It's 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 the most annoying thing I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I'd like to know more about this. <laughs> well, it's male, just, it's male just watching. It's just phony. You know, it's watching one of your own do the dance. Wow. You know, <gasps> and wow. it's like, do you guys ever tell me about this? Shit? I don't know. I feel I like mean, I don't. I mean, I don't really fall into those. I mean, in, in our friend group, I mean, Jesse and I have kept a pretty stable friend group since high school like i don't think we've really run into it too much in our own friend group but like you know when someone's doing the dance Mm -hmm. you know when someone's just laying on the bullshit just to like be close to another human for like i don't know 15 minutes if you're counting like my kind of (laughs) timeline you know like it's like like what are you you don't you don't think that's interesting what are you talking about (laughs) Yeah. Like, since I, when are you interested in that kind of stuff? I think it's a more visceral reaction from us because we've all done it. Yeah. That's the thing. For it's sure. like, like, we're really angry at ourselves. Like, That's yeah. a really right. interesting, right. like, that should be explored. I feel like it's the same for women. When women tell me she's no good, what, I have I a couple female friends who, are, who I feel like I can be very open and honest with, and they'll be like, I know what she's doing. I've done it. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I know what you, you know. I don't necessarily know if I would have that, but maybe I, maybe I would. Maybe I have with you, to a degree. I don't know. I, maybe I'm gonna make a uh, like a scientific, like, exploration here of why why I think it. Like you said, it's the dance. It's yeah. mating strategies. Yeah. Right. So like, as a guy, you recognize all of the strategies available, and you rec- you've learned why not to do some of these things. Yeah. And it, like you haven't done that from our, we haven't done what you've done, but you haven't done what we've done, and you can't really see how sniveling and disgusting it is. Right, I don't and, have to do any of that. Yeah, mating dance at <laughs> yeah. all. Like I could just literally point at the, like that's like the woman's perspective. <laughs> yeah. I was talking with some of my do friends. the sexual selector. So. Well, I was talking to some of my friends recently, and we were like, "When the fuck are we gonna realize that we put like a total sex embargo on, and we're just like, don't you're not we're not fucking any of you until we fix this shit up. Like I don't want to see any of this behavior like at all. No one's fucking you. Like when are we gonna realize that that's the that's like the Biggest currency. That's like the yeah, but, absolute currency. But like, if you go that far, I think everyone you knows punishing? that already. <laughs> no, yeah. but no, but we've never just been like no. Because the thing is, You're from a, every single no, no, woman no, no. from a woman's perspective, we were talking about like so to give you a little context is like I've I've decided to sleep with people because I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to, but he seems to really like me, so I guess I'm going to do it. Like, like that's been my, like, acceptance to, like, sleep with somebody is but like, oh, maybe he really likes me. I guess I'll do it rather than, like, rock the boat and, like, not be, like, unattractive to him for, like, a few minutes if I turn him down or whatever. Like, and that is, like, a weird... So we have... So what I'm saying is, like, we have the, the same amount of, like, questioning of like oh am i am i cool in this situation like dudes are trying to be cool and like do that whole like cock walk that you were talking about cock walk. And, like, <laughs> and then we're also just trying to be like oh where's our role here like when when do we like you know we're not like we're not like aware of like oh yeah i've got like i've got a pussy i can fucking dictate how this whole situation goes we're also like Ooh, like where's my role in here, and like what do I do to like make this you, you better? You don't know for your everybody? power. You don't know. Yeah, your if only power. I knew girls were that nervous, I'd have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've, oh shit! That's I let really... sorry, ladies, I let it out. That's, I don't think women know how nervous dudes are. Yeah, like like most of the. But confidence... what I'm saying is, we're the exact same way. We're way, we're fucking also really nervous, and like I said, I've like 
consented to sexual encounters because I was like, oh, I'm too nervous and I don't know if like if if you might not like me if I don't, you know if I don't yeah. want to be here. Like I've I've made this argument before and I, you can feel free to totally ridicule me and criticize me if you disagree with me. Mm -hmm. But so there's this 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 statistic that women are more agreeable than men like generally whether that's whether that's uh nature or nurture is up for debate it's probably both i think it's definitely nurture i think it's well to make a biological argument it would make sense for women to be more agreeable just for putting up with infants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like yeah for you sure. know like yeah, for sure. so i think there's it maybe yeah, if you look at any fucking like holiday scenario like the dudes are fucking watching tv and the yeah. women are cleaning up and that is every fucking yeah. family no matter how it's progressive because they're so agreeable yeah yeah it, i i don't want to i don't want to you're, you're joking but that's fucking true no I, I i don't want to act like i'm saying like this is women and mm -hmm. or like there isn't because i think that what, what culture or society does is like a magnifying glass it's like hey Let's take this and just blow it up so that we can use it right. as much as we can. Right. We do it to men, too, in a different way. Totally. But uh, so because women are more agreeable, I think men don't really know what it feels like to say no as a woman. Right. So like because it's not just it's not just fear of physical whatever. It's also like. I really genuinely in all of my being do not want to upset this, 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 the balance here. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you be happy with the situation. And I, but I don't really want to do that. Like, right. I don't think dudes, we don't really understand that because <laughs> we're not the sexual selector. And if yeah. somebody says <laughs> there isn't a time, I mean, it's, I mean, that's not true. There are times where you say no, but like, I don't think we feel They're it the same. Way less, yeah. yeah I, don't, like, I don't think we yeah. feel it the same way. There was something really um, really cool that I was listening to um, on how I built this. Um, it was an interview with the, the woman who founded Bumble. Yeah, I, I listened to that one. That, yeah, it's a really good one. She started with Tinder. For some reason, she can't talk about it legally. Um, there was a bad experience she had with Tinder and left the company um, soon after. Maybe a couple of years or something. Um, she founded Bumble, um, at, kind of as a, a response to her trauma, and in a way um, to kind of reset um, the the dating um, dynamic between men and women, um, because she feels um, that like men are conditioned to be go getters. They go, they get, they seek. Women are conditioned to kind of play hard to get. So in, you know, in, in a sense to like reject men, you know, go get women reject. It becomes this frustrated, this frustrating game between men and women. And so what Bumble did um, was kind of flip that around. Women have to be the ones to seek out the man. And men are like, cool, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is great. Yeah, that's tr it's true. So um this is another i'm really into a lot of different things so i i read about a lot about a lot of different things and i read the book called the selfish gene by richard dawkins it's a very interesting book and in it he describes um why females of basically all mammals are coy they're 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 choosy and it's it's an interesting idea that i don't i'm not trying to claim that like that this is like something that we're stuck with yeah but there's there's going to be solutions, but I don't think that we can come up with a solution if we don't know the truth about why it happened, you know? Mm -hmm. But so females are coy because we have different sex cells. That's the, the fundamental difference between men and women is I have a billion tiny sex cells. You have a finite number of large sex cells mm -hmm. and they have different strategies to find the opposite. So like bare minimum male is spray you know like yeah, just get it you know, everywhere. like just just yeah. fucking it whatever where wherever it, it sticks it's yeah. good <laughs> right just get it everywhere. so that's not good for women because then yeah. so you're you're both invested genetically not like mentally mm -hmm. like your genes are invested in your offspring they want them to survive but the the male strategy of spraying is like well one of them will survive right, mm -hmm. right. but the right. female is like eh, i need this one to survive mm -hmm. because right. I'm stuck with this for nine months and yeah. then another year. You it's, know, it's, it's so, probably even 
hugely about their own self survival because it's like you you get the wrong seed and she could die. Mm. That's know? true. Yeah. yeah, there's all sorts of weird. Do you, yeah. did you know that like primates used to have penis bones? Primate males used to have penis bones. Like a literal boner? That's why they call yeah. it boners. Yeah. I think it's primates. Yeah, they had they had penis bones, and they're they're like wondering why did we get rid of that. Like why did why did that evolve <laughs> why away? What do you want to know? <laughs> yeah, why? Well, why? Yeah. You missed the penis, but well, so the the best explanation I've come I've heard is that the penis bone. So if you have a bone there, you can just have sex all the time. Like your health doesn't matter, your yeah, virility right. doesn't matter. So like, it's better for women to be able to say this guy can keep it up he's he must be getting food like he must mm. be he must be able to provide for himself and yeah. not die and not get sick and tired all the time so that's the argument that it was just better for women for females to select better wow wow so <laughs> the men with the penis bones or the monkeys with the penis bones the primates were they just always hard they didn't need to be it was just a bone it was no, just right. a bone. so so yeah it's a bone so i mean like we're so was it did it look like they just had like a constant like erection yeah i guess wow, that's just, crazy i mean it might have been like flabby underneath it but it didn't ma- okay. there i think i, I'm, I don't want to misspeak but i think they were talking about why how we got to the point where humans have sex for pleasure mm-hmm. in the way that most animals don't most animals right. don't have sex for pleasure it's like that's interesting it's just it i find it fascinating i don't yeah. I, I, I don't know you know <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna like read this whole book to you guys it's a it's an interesting no it's it's interesting interesting topic like uh uh why do peacocks have feathers yeah you know like why do they why do they do that yeah um there's uh, another podcast uh npr does how i built this as well as this other one called hidden brain uh one i listened to recently it was oddly about like the seven sins but it, it lingered a lot on lust and it was talking about how, like, up until agriculture and, like, controlled el- agriculture, humanity was, like, um, basically uh, polyamorous by default. And once agriculture took place and say, you know, Jesse has a whole fucking, he has a whole field full of wheat. And, like, he's, he never, hu- wheat. he's never hungry. He has bread and oatmeal mm-hmm. and shit all the time. Come on, sleep over my house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to... You know, I'm a I'm a woman in this in this scenario. <laughs> you could be a man. I could I don't give a shit. I'm gonna fuck Jesse because he has wheat all the time. I'm never going hungry, so I'm gonna stay with Jesse forever because I'm never gonna be hungry. Thanks, Dirk. Eh? Until his wheat field goes to shit, then I'm, I'm gonna leaving his I'm gonna sleep with Jimmy because <laughs> he's got a whole wheel. He's got a whole fuck he's ton got of got barley. A bunch of corn. Smoke yeah. wings. He's got a corn. Yeah. I he's feel like a- we're gonna keep going. I want to. Bring up is this yeah. cool? Or I don't want to keep <laughs> yeah. you guys. No, it's cool. I, We're I, just riffing now. I wanna I I've been thinking about something. I feel like I can talk about pretty so you know how like the 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 criticism of the male desire is like you want the Madonna and the whore. Mm-hmm. You know? Mother mm-hmm. the whore, yeah. 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 So I think women have their own version of that. I agree. So I agree. I, you either want like this sensitive I don't I don't really have like a good like a good as as honed in as like Madonna or whore, but like you want either a sensitive guy or you want a fucking bad boy. Yeah, like, you, want, you want the that's you want, the thing. You want Eric Foreman or or the Fonzie. Yeah, <laughs> you want the so guys want want. I guess for guys it doesn't matter which one has your children. <laughs> Actually, you probably want the Madonna to have your children. <laughs> mm. I guess right, but for for women they want. I cannot generalize that much. My argument would be for the women. It's like the stable guy to raise the kids. But the genes from that risk taking badass mm-hmm. over there. You know, I want I want my kids to have that guy's genes. Yeah. <laughs> but I know he's not gonna be there. Right. He's gone. Mm-hmm. So I need this I want this guy because he's really sweet and kind and, and he has he's very stable. Mm. Yeah. So it's like it, we're all fucked up. We all have this like desire for two people right. that right. we can't seem to be for it's interesting. Why not be that for each other? You know? Like why not? This is why I keep 
Die fucking nine dudes and I. I can't. What <laughs> 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 to do? I heard you fucked all of Pearl Jam. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. Actually, I did. Recently on there. The dogs <laughs> begin to smell. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking Stone Temple Pilots. Same they, thing. That's the thing. They just keep fucking up all their 90s grunge. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care who it is. Pearl Jam's the original of this. This is the second time in this podcast we've talked about Pearl Jam. I love them. They're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because you're trying really hard to like act like you don't care. Oh god! But like you really no, because, do. because because it's been a does. thing. She They've cares. been doing this to me. For it's five like one years. of those things where it's like a joke to them, and I'm like, stop saying that. Like initially, I get it. and then they keep doing it, and they keep doing it. And now I'm just like, stop. It's, stop saying it. It's it's like when you're in school and that one teacher really can't mm-hmm. handle it. You know, like oh yeah, the, if that's what it is, it's like. This person's really affected by this. So I'm, and it's For even no better reason. that you're trying not to be. For no reason. <laughs> like, there's no reason. I feel nothing about this. However, I get you do triggered. Feel something. I do. I don't know what it is. And it just frustrates me because it's like, well, it's, it's very because close. Because Pearl Jam's not a cool band, and you don't want people knowing that you like Pearl Jam. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, it's just that it's very close to the music that I like. And. <laughs> In time or like in in style or in what way? Like I love grunge music, like yeah. that whole that whole thing. Like I love, so yeah, I lo- I do like some Pearl Jam songs, and I fucking love like Stone Temple Pilots. I love Alice in Chains to a degree that no one should even recognize. Like that's like you know, but like Pearl like Pearl Jam just brings it condenses <laughs> my love of grunge into this weird like sect that I'm not interested in like it just doesn't so it may it does hit home because yeah i do have these like weird love affairs with these bands that are like kind of maybe not relevant anymore and like a little silly but it's not pearl jam it's not pearl jam <laughs> but what about creed i heard you love creed <laughs> okay that can't yeah. get to me I'm not into that she, she's a big fan of post grunge yeah i love post nickelback grunge. and <laughs> Nickelback. Mm-hmm. I've mentioned this before on this podcast. One of the meanest things anybody ever did to me was uh, it was New Year's Eve. I don't remember what year. And uh, they went to the jukebox, put like 20, 30 bucks in and just played that song by Nickelback. <laughs> Which one? I think photograph? it was probably Photograph. Uh, oh. uh, I don't have know. You seen I the thing, have you seen the thing? It was it's like, look video. at this graph. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> There's this even better video I saw recently. Oh, it's um, so fucking weird. Someone, <laughs> someone like took a Nickelback song. I like your pants around your feet. Yeah. <laughs> that song. And then, so it was just basically that and then that line. And then it would switch to, I like your feet around your pants. <laughs> and then, and, and then, then it's like, and, feet. And then it would like build pants. up to like, I love feet oh and I God. love pants. <laughs> I love, I love feet <laughs> and I love pants. Yeah, that's how. I, like, that was great. Nickelback is so memeable. Yeah, they're really sweet guys. It sounds like though, they sound like they're really, yeah, really kind people. They're my best friends. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like, they're super fucking famous. Yeah, like they did it. Whatever, yeah. give them a break. Yeah, but at the they same fucking time, did it. You all would love to. You would all fucking cream in your jeans to I don't, be Nickelback right now. I don't blame Nickelback for that jukebox fiasco. No. That's not their fault. That's your friend. Yeah, that's your friend's that's fault. Not, that's not. It's got nothing to do with Nickelback. That's December thirty first. A drunk friend who's just like, you know what? I don't give a shit. I'm gonna ruin everyone's <laughs> night. Pry trying to get laid. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right at midnight, yeah. like right before midnight, just. It's like that one stand-up joke by some guy, I don't know, um, about Guy Fieri, how everyone just loves to hate him for no reason, and he's actually like a really cool dude. <laughs> he's <laughs> Just like yeah. helping people out all the time. He's like doing all these charities for yeah. school school lunches. He like gives kids a bunch of free shit. He like, his show is like bringing PR to places that are like smaller than could ever like afford that PR. Yeah. Like that like that's his job and everyone just hates him because he wore his sunglasses on the back of his head <laughs> one time. <laughs> and his fridge has like a racing stripe on it. Or oh something. he knows yeah. who he is. See, this is a great yeah. example. You you'd bring that guy home, it's like this guy knows who he is. He's not bullshitting. Yeah. It's totally fine. Not me. Not my style. Love him. Yeah. 
love that guy. You can't love that guy. that guy. I got a meme of him recently that made me laugh really loud, but if I describe it, it won't be funny. It was just... You just have to be there. Just show yeah. us and we'll all laugh, and then no one will know <laughs> what's going on. Just, I'll just show pretend to, to show you. <laughs> it was, you know, they're making the live action Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a picture of Ursula. Oh, the, I have seen that. And actually. then next to her, it was oh, a picture yeah, of Guy I, that, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was <laughs> funny. <laughs> all right, I think Disney is like time. Like yeah, time, it's time. time. We're done. Time We're done. Yeah. The podcast when, is over. When you go I need a cigarette anyway. Candy ambulance too. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank, yeah. you, Thank you for Jimmy. having this is great. us. Thanks for if coming If you heard on, anything guys. on here, it's not true. It is true. <laughs> this is a fake podcast. I'd like to podcast. apologize. <laughs> You're a great boss. <laughs> A Best job of my terrible life. Terrible landlord. I'm just kidding. You're a fucking scumbag. <laughs> Fuck you. I feel like we got a lot out today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank this you. is so much fun. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yep. I love feet. And I love no, that real life. Fun. This that is weird. Back to real life. That was life. fucking awesome. Thank fun. you. Yeah, that flowed so well.